Hey everyone, it's Lance from Christianity Minute. Welcome to episode 27 of our study series on Luke. Well, temptation affects us all. Even Jesus was affected. There are three types of temptation as stated in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Desires of the flesh, desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. Jesus was no stranger to temptation. In fact, it's part of what made him the perfect sacrifice. The fact that he was tempted in every way, but even in times of extreme weakness, did not succumb to that temptation. Today we're going to finish reading about Jesus' temptation as Satan offers him the pride of life. Let's read Luke chapter 4, verses 9 through 3. It reads, And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command the angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike a foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Well, two weeks ago, we talked about fasting and how it weakens the body. And Satan tempted Jesus based on his bodily needs. Here's a link to study number 25, just in case that you missed it. Last week, we discussed how Satan tempted Jesus as a man, offering him literally the world. Here's another link to last week's study, if you need to catch up. Well, today's temptation will be the crown of them all. Many will argue that the order in Matthew, which flips the second and third temptations, is likely the proper order, because it seems that the devil puts all his cards out on the table when he asks Jesus to worship him. I don't think that I will argue with that idea, but I really like the order that Luke puts them in better because of the scale of the temptations. While the first temptation was of the body, the second was tempting of the mind of man, the third was directly tempting the mind of God. To be honest, it really doesn't matter what order they're in, but I personally like the way that Luke puts them best. You can make your own opinion on that one. Well, the devil sets Jesus on the very top of the temple. How did that happen? Well, just like last week, I can only guess, but it happened. Whether they were seen up there, the temple was a busy place after all, has never been recorded as far as I've studied. While on top of the temple, the devil asks Jesus to prove that he is the Son of God, essentially casting doubt on what they both already know to be true, that Jesus is who he says he is. This is how Jesus would have been tempted on pride. Most folks would want to prove what's true, especially with such a strong status symbol as being the Son of God. Satan even makes it more tempting by citing Scripture. You know, it may seem really strange to think that the devil knows Scripture, but some of the most dangerous people out there know Scripture and choose to ignore what God says, or, as Satan does here, distort it. Paul knew about this from his letter to the Galatians. We read in Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. He says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one that we preached you, let him be accursed. As we said before, now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. The Galatians were falling into a similar temptation as the devil was offering Jesus as they were following a different gospel, which could be the misapplication of scripture. This could have been the creeds or doctrines of man, a misuse of scripture, or any number of things. I even talked about it a few weeks ago with the words of the Pope, although those turned out to be false, following people down the wrong path. Check out that video right here on this card. Jesus again comes up with the perfect retort, though, as he quotes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. It says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test, as you tested him at Massa. Now, this reference from Massa is from Exodus chapter 17 and verse 7. 
And it says, And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The Israelites were complaining and grumbling that they had just been led out of Egypt to die, despite the fact that God was taking actually pretty good care of them. They were so discontented that Moses was afraid that they were going to stone him to death. The people had no faith in God, and even tested whether God was with them or not, despite the fact that God had shown himself to always be with them, having just led them away from Egypt. They were on their way to the Promised Land. Satan was challenging that Jesus was who he was, and Jesus had just put him in his place. We see that Satan finally ends this temptation and goes back to lick his wounds. 1 Peter chapter 5, starting in verse 8, reads, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him. Firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Well, the devil puts up a good fight, and he's always seeking to pick off anyone who is weak, just as Jesus was. But even in his weakened state, we see him emerge victorious in this incredible battle between him and Satan. Don't let the seemingly calm nature of this exchange fool you. Everything hung in the balance that day. You, me, everyone that we hold dear, they all hung on the outcome of this temptation. Remember, though, that Jesus always had the power over the devil, not because he was God, but because no man can be defeated by Satan unless he lets himself be defeated. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Jesus as a man faced the devil head on, and he won. You and I can do the exact same thing. The devil couldn't make Jesus, or you, or I, do anything. He truly has no power over any of us, but he tempts. That's the difference. God desires us to love him with all of our hearts. Even if the devil could force us on our knees and somehow manipulate our bodies into offering some sort of worship, (laughs) that's not his goal. He wants to pull our hearts away from God. And that takes us giving in and choosing to follow the temptations of the devil. You know, there's one more part of this, though, that we haven't talked about yet, and Luke doesn't really mention it either, but Matthew does. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 11. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. You know, I can't stress the importance of support from the church enough. Jesus had to face the devil all on his own. But you know what? We don't. We help each other. We love and care for each other and help each other get focused on God. Jesus, once his temptation was over, was comforted by angels. Did they feed him? Did they strengthen him? Did they let him cry? I don't know. But Jesus, as a human being, needed support after such a trying time. And if Jesus needed it, well... We do too. Never be afraid to tell evil no. Satan will always flee from you because the only power he has is what you give him. And you can always get help from each and every one of your brethren in Christ to help in resisting him. That's been your Christianity Minute for this week. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you like this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing and sharing with your friends. I work very hard to make sure that all things said are scripturally accurate. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in that comment section below. And I'll see you next time right here on Christianity Minute.